Hello everyone, Ryan here with Product Impressions, and today we are going to be taking a look at the new noise-canceling Venue headphones from Skullcandy. Alright, here we have the Venue noise-canceling headphones from Skullcandy. They connect by Bluetooth, 24 hours of battery life, and you were supposed to get about 5 hours of battery life with 10 minutes of charging. So we are going to see how all of that works. Down the corner here, you can also find it with Tile. For those of you who are not familiar, Tile is a system where you can find items that you routinely lose with the Bluetooth on your phone. I've never used that before, so that's going to be new for me. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have inside here. Nice, uh, eh, slightly plasticky canvas traveling case. All right, so let's see here. Let's move this aside. We have a case. All right, looks like we've got some instructions and a couple of cords. Pretty nice looking headphones, a little simple X branding and the skull on the side, both sides. All right. Little elastic straps to hold things in place. We've got a type B power cable to charge everything. And if you want to actually plug it in, you've got a cable to do that as well. Got some simple instructions here. Quick start guide. Yeah, connecting things by Bluetooth is easy enough. All right. I am normally using a pair of headphones from Sony. This is the 1000MX. I've been using these for a few years, so we are going to do some compare and contrast. See how the Skull Candy headphones stack up. All right, so we've been using these headphones for about a week now, and for me that is about yeah, 10 or 11 hours worth of use. Uh, so let's start off with what I think is really good about these. First off, the Bluetooth connection was perfect. As soon as it was connected to the phone, it worked flawlessly. It never faltered or disconnected at any time. Uh, next up, battery life. As I said, I've used these for about 11 hours or so, and let's see, we have about four different uh, lights on there to indicate how much power it has, and the first light didn't go out until I had been using it for about eight and a half hours. So I'm pretty confident that they are correct in saying that you'll get at least 24 hours of battery life. Uh, the things that weren't quite as good, uh, the, uh, the audio quality, I prefer the Sony's. Uh, they have a little bit more of a mid-range. These uh, Skull Candy headphones tend to accentuate the high and low end, so if you are particularly interested in the sounds of guitars or things like that, they might sound a little bit hollow. Uh, voices in podcasts might sound a little bit thinner than you uh, would expect from a really high quality headphone, but all in all I would say that they are very good. I noticed this primarily when I first started using these and tended to notice it less as I went on after using it for a couple of hours. I wouldn't notice until there was a particularly uh, good part of a song that I know really well or something like that. Then it would remind me again, but by and large it wasn't bad at all. Um, let's see, the noise cancelling of these headphones, uh, slightly worse than the Sony's. Uh, these tended to give you a little bit more of the background noise, particularly with things like uh, running water or uh, washing machines, dishwashers, things like that. Uh, but if you are listening at any appreciable volume, you know, not loud enough to hurt your ears or anything, but at a reasonable volume, it's going to drown out most of the rest of that anyway. Uh, you can hear a little bit more of car sounds when you're walking around outside. I did test that out, uh, but by and large, I would say that uh, it works very well, pretty uh, pretty comparable to the Sony's, though not quite as isolating. Uh, the one thing I did notice with walking around outside is you can get a little bit more of the wind noise. Uh, if you've ever seen old home videos, you know what it sounds like when uh, wind is blowing across the microphone, and that's kind of what it sounds like inside of these when you're walking around in a windy area. Uh, one thing that I did have an issue with on these is the sizing. Uh, you can see that there are uh, four little lines there. Those are for most of the notches. And my head is fairly average size. It measures a little less than 23 inches around, so a hat size of about seven and a quarter to seven and three eighths. That's pretty solidly in the middle of any uh, measurement that I've seen. But in order to wear these, I have to have it 
fully extended, and even then it's not comfortable for long periods of time. So if you're looking for something to buy for a younger demographic, these could be fantastic headphones for that. Uh, on that point, I do have to give it to these uh, Sonys because this is about where I would normally wear them, and you have all of that extra room. So if you are buying something for someone with a very large head, or you yourself have a larger head, go with the Sonys. Otherwise, these skull candies can work just fine. Uh, the controls on the headphones. With the Sonys, it's a simple swipe. If you want to go forward, you swipe forward, back, swipe back, volume up and volume down. It's just a matter of sliding across the touch panel on the side of the headphones. With the skull candies, you have uh, the plus and minus. That's for volume or skipping forward or back. If you press and hold for a few seconds, it will skip forward. Press and hold a few seconds, it will skip backwards, and the button in the middle turns it on and off. Uh, the issue that I have with this, it works really well for the volume, but if you're skipping forward or back in a podcast, it is a little bit more difficult when you have to sit there and hold it for about four seconds before it actually moves where you are on the podcast. If you're skipping through tracks on music, that's fine. But if you are just moving forward or back in podcast to try and skip through commercials, that can be a little bit frustrating because you don't really have as much control over it. On the other side, we do just have the volume and switching on and off the noise canceling. As I said, the noise canceling does tend to work pretty well. So uh, I do think that the Sonys are a lot easier to use from a control standpoint, but these are sufficient, I would say. Uh, the main thing that a lot of people might be interested in is the price. Now, the Sonys, I've been using them for a couple of years. They are the previous generation. I thought it would be good to compare because these do not require a companion app that gives you a lot of control over the sound, just like the Skull Candies do not. Uh, that's why I thought it would be good to compare the audio quality because I'm not messing with anything internally. Now, the next generation of these Sonys are a available on uh, Best Buy or Amazon. It's the 1000 XM2. Uh, that when I checked them at the time of the filming of this, there are listings between $300 and $350 for these. With these Skull Candies, the listings are about $130. So does that saving of uh, almost two-thirds of the price of the Sonys mean that these are better? That is entirely up to you, but I would say that these are a fantastic fantastic uh, budget option for noise cancelling headphones. Sony has a similar version that is supposed to have a long battery life, but I think that the noise cancelling in these Skull Candies is actually better than it is in the cheap Sonys. So this was very surprising to me. I've always considered Skull Candy to be kind of the spam email of headphones. They're always kind of there. It's in bright colors to try and tempt you to pick it up, but these are very nice looking and very respectable sound quality for $130. One last point to consider on these is the travel cases that they come with. Here we have the Sony, and here we have the Skull Candy. As you can tell, the Sony is significantly smaller, but at the same time, if you're wearing this on a flight or something, most of the time people wrap it around their necks and don't take up space in their carry-on. So uh, if this matters to you, it's something to consider, but Sony's do come up with a much nicer travel case than the Skull Candies. If you think this headphone review has been helpful, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.